Hi, and happy Monday. I'm Janet Leonard. I'm the founder and CEO of Virtual Instructor. And every Monday, I try to show you some kind of fun tip or trick to make your life a little easier so you don't have to spend as much time on that computer working on all those software programs. All right, so today's talk is going to be about headers and footers in Microsoft Word. So if you've been using headers and footers in Word, there may be times you felt like throwing that computer out the window. So let's try to save your computer and I'll show you some little tips to make it a little bit easier. All right, before we get started, I'm just gonna pop over to our website so you can see what the upcoming Monday Lives are. So over on our website at virtualinstructor.com, on the homepage, you can go to Monday Live Calendar of Topics and then this will tell you what the topics are. So today we have talking about headers, word headers and footers. Tomorrow, or tomorrow, next Monday, um, I'll be showing you how to insert forms and quizzes into your PowerPoint presentations. So it's an actual um, add-on that you can use with PowerPoint and other programs as well that comes with your off Microsoft Office. It's also free as long as you have an Office uh, login account. And then I'll also show you how the next week how to use Microsoft's To Do app, which is another kind of cool app that you can use. Now, if you like these Monday Lives and you want a reminder one hour before the live uh, broadcast, then you can come over here and fill in your name and email address. We'll only send you one email a week. It will be one hour before the Monday Live and it will remind you it'll have the login link and all that sort of thing. All right, enough of that. Let's pop over into Microsoft Word and in headers and footers, what I'm going to do is just create a simple document so you can kind of see the, the structure of it. But you normally will be using what are called section breaks. So if you haven't used them before, I'll show you how to use that. Now, one thing, one thing I would recommend you do is on the Home tab, make sure you turn this option on. It's called Show Hide. So right now it's showing the paragraph marker. If I click on this again, it hides it so you see more of what it's going to look like when it actually prints out. When you're working with headers and footers, I highly recommend you keep that show hide on. It will make your life a lot easier. All right, so typically with a long document, you'll have a title page, right? So what I'll do is I'll just type in title page. And then um, at this point, I might hit enter once or twice, and then I'll come back later and fill in the title page. But here's where it's important. You'll go up to layout, and instead of just doing a plain old page break, you're gonna go to breaks, and you're going to choose this one, which is next page. So it's like a page break, but it's the next section. So a section is how we separate things out in Word. So I'll choose under section breaks, next page, and see how it says section break, next page. It doesn't say just page break. I'll show you in a moment how you can tell the difference. Now, typically, the next thing you'll do is you'll want a table of contents. So I'm just going to put in table of contents, and I'll show you how to generate it later. It's really super fast. And we're going to then want to maybe start the body of the document. So we'll go back over to breaks and we'll go back to section break next page. Okay, so now we have three pages going on, right? And I'll just put in um, a document starts here. Okay, so you can kind of keep track of what's going on. Now, when you want to edit a header or a footer, one way that you can do it is if you're looking at the document, if you move your mouse pointer up into the area where the header would be, you can double click. So if I just double click, it pops me into the header and footer. I can tell because of two several things. First of all, I can see a cursor there, that's nice. Up at the top, there's a new tab that's been added. It's called header and footer. And then the other thing you see is a header section one, a header section two, and up toward the top, we can go to the next header, and this is header section three. Now, on header section three, notice to the right, it says same as previous. And if I go to the previous section, it says same as previous. And then if we look at the first section, it doesn't say anything. So this is where it drives people up the wall. So I'm gonna do it kind of the wrong way so you can kind of see what's going on. And then I'm gonna show you how to clean it up. So let's say we wanted to put in some kind of title. now. I'm on header section one, which is the title page, right? But what if I go on down to, I'm in here where the body of the document is. So to get out of the header footer, you can either click this little close header footer button or just double click back in the body. So 
double click on the header or footer, pops you into the header and footer to edit. Double click back in the body, pops you back into the body of the document to edit. So that's a super fast way to do that. So let's say we're here in the body of the document. And um, if you've watched any of my other Monday Lives with Word, you're probably familiar with typing in equal R-A-N-D, open, close parentheses. When I hit enter, I get some sample text. So I've got some text here. And then I think, oh, you know what? I want to go ahead and put a page number in here. So I'm going to double click up in the header so I can edit it. And then while I have the header footer, there is actually on the, the tab, the ribbon, you'll see page number. So if I click on the drop down, I can choose to have my page number at the top. And if I do that, I can choose where I want it to appear on the top. So I think I'll choose this one. I want it in the upper right corner. Now, here's one thing that drives people up the wall. They're like, well, how come it's three? I really want it to start with one. I'll show you how to fix that in a moment. And then maybe I want to say chapter one. So I'm just going to type in chapter one. Okay. Now, if we scroll back up, notice that in header section two, it says chapter one, and it's got a page number two. And in header section one, it says chapter one, and it's got a page number. So then maybe you're thinking, well, I don't want a chapter one in the title page. So I'm going to delete it. Well, because these things are, all of these are linked because of that thing that says same as previous, as soon as we delete it, we no longer have anything in header section two, but you also no longer have anything in header section three. And that's what usually drives people up the wall. So here's the way to fix it. We'll start up at header section two. So in header section two, I'm just going to click inside. So I'm in header section two. It says same as previous, and it has this thing link to previous. I'm going to turn that off. So now whatever I put in header section two, maybe I decide I want to type in here um, table of contents. So I'll just type in table of contents, and I'll just hit tab a couple times. It moves it back over. And I could type and notice it does not show up here. But if we go down to header section three, header section three is the same as previous. So it's linked. So here's another thing that drives people up the wall. So they think, OK, I'm going to change that. I'm going to get rid of that. So if I delete that, remember, it's linked. So it would delete it up at the other one. So I'll delete this, I'll delete the whole thing. So it's gone. And now that one's gone because header section three is linked. So as long as I'm in header section three, I can turn off the link to previous. As long as you don't see that same as previous, then it's not linked. So now we can come back over here. I'll go to the left margin and we'll move back over and be at the left margin. And I'll type in chapter one, and then we'll go back over into the header and footer. And I'll go back to the page number and tell it to insert a page number at the far right. And I get a three. We'll fix that in a little bit. Oh, I forgot. Sometimes that does wipe it out. So I'm going to have to type chapter one again. Okay. Now, when we go back up to header section two, there's no page number. And that doesn't say chapter one because there's no link to it. If I wanted to link it to, if I wanted this to be linked to chapter two, uh, header section two, then when I'm in header section three, I simply link it to the previous. But we're not going to do that. So the main thing is to make sure you unlink it. Now I can put in a page number and I'll insert a new page number. I'll put it over at the far right. We'll deal with the numbering issue in a second. And if I wanted it to say a uh, table of contents in here, I could just go back over to the left and type in table of contents, hit a tab. There it is back over there. Notice it doesn't show up in the header uh, section one. And then header section three is separate. So the whole secret is to turn off the link. Now, the next thing I'll show you is if you're in the header, and as long as you're in the header, you can click on header and footer. Then I'm going to select this page two. I don't want it to be page two. It's the table of contents. I want the table of contents to be page one, and maybe I want it to look like a Roman numeral. So then all you have to do is select it. And by the way, you can tell it's a special field because when you select it, it's kind of gray. Watch when I select the text. Um, 
Well, that didn't make a lot of sense. But when you select it, this is a field. And now I'll go over to page number. And then there's this thing called format page numbers. So I'm going to click on that. And I want to change this page format to be a Roman numeral. And I don't want it to start. It says continue from the previous section. So it's saying, OK, well, first page in this document is page one. I don't want it to do that. I want to say, nope start at page one and it knows it's a roman numeral so i'll choose okay now we have a roman numeral one for our table of contents now if we scroll on down and go to the header section three in here it says it's page two because it's starting from the previous page or the previous section and we want to say nope this one is going to be page one because it's the first actual page in our document so then i'll select that I'll go back over to the page number, back down to format numbers. I do want it to be the Arabic number, and I want it to start with a one. Now, a little side note, every once in a while, you'll have trouble, and it just won't start with one. It'll start with two every time you're in here. So you fool it by putting a negative, or you put a zero in, and then it will put it into one. But I'm going to say one. And so now the body of our document starts with page one. Now let's pretend I need, I'm going to start, I'm back in the document, double click. And let's say I want to start another chapter. So I'll go back up to layout. I'll go to breaks and I'll tell it I want a new uh, section break next page. And so now when I double click inside the header, notice by default, it's linked to the previous header. So again, if you wanted to change this to be chapter two, then all we have to do is while we're there, we will click on link to previous, which breaks that link. We'll change this to chapter two. Now, most of the time it will continue numbering normally, but we're going to go ahead and select this number. We'll go back to this little drop down and choose format numbers and we'll say continue from the previous section. So from now on, your page number should just be fine. So now we've got a page two in here and so forth. So hopefully this is giving you some ideas on how to deal with um, the page breaks, why a section next section break next page is so important when you're dealing with headers and footers. Okay, I'm gonna show you one other fun thing. Um, let's just put in here, I'll be real creative and call it heading one, right? And then I'm gonna come over here and call this one heading two, real creative. And I'll put a little bit of text in there just so we have something. Well, if you mark something in here as heading one, heading two or heading three, we're gonna make these both heading heading ones, right? Oh, let's just uh, topic, call it topic so it's not confusing. So I'll call it topic one, topic two, okay? So it just happens to be the style called heading. Now, if we move back up into the table of contents area, and I'll just hit enter a couple times to move that down, I'm gonna delete this word table of contents. If we go up to the review tab, then we go over to, um, let's see, where are we? Uh, table of contents, oh, I, I like, sorry, references. And then we go to table of contents. You have three different formats you can choose and you can customize them. I'll just choose this one. So when we choose it, it automatically creates your table of contents based on your heading styles. So if there was a sub topic here, let's just call it subtopic. And I made that, I'll come back over to home. I made that heading two. Then when I come back up to my table of contents, all I have to do is click on here and choose update table. And I'll just tell, tell it to update the entire table. And now we have our subtopic. So as long as you do whatever you want to have show up in your table of contents as a heading one, heading two, heading three. By the way, you can go all the way up to heading nine. But by default, it assumes just the first three headings. Then it's super easy to generate a table of contents. So the last thing I'll show you is what if I do a regular page break? I'm just going to do a regular page break, which is control enter on the PC, command enter on the Mac. See the difference between page break is just a single dotted line and it says page break, whereas a section break is doubles and it says section break next page. 
That's how you know the difference between what a section break is, just a regular page break. And the last thing I'll show you is, again, with the table of contents, all you have to do is click on it, click update the table, update the entire table, and now notice it recognizes that the subtopic is over on page three. So as long as you use the heading styles when you're creating your document, then you can generate a table of contents in no time at all. So hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to deal with headers and footers. And I threw in a bonus of the uh, table of contents. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And next week, I'm going to show you how you can I'll just pop back over here, say goodbye to you officially. There we go. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps make it a little easier when you're working in tables, uh, headers and footers with Word. And next week, I'm going to show you how to insert forms and quizzes into your PowerPoint presentations. So have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you next week. Bye.